Hey there, folks. Good morning. I'm Errol Barnett. We have breaking news to report to you from New York City, where New Jersey Senator Robert Menendez has just pleaded not guilty to federal bribery charges. The arraignment just wrapped up uh, moments ago. I'm Lana Zak. Good to be with you. To be We're with going you. to bring in now CBS News' legal contributor Jessica Levinson for more. Jessica, what comes next for Menendez and the co-defendants in the case? Uh, what comes next is that the case will continue and his defense team will try and get the case thrown out completely. I suspect that that will not be successful, but there will be motion practice. They're going to fight about what evidence will be presented if and when there is a trial. They're going to fight about what experts will be there if and when there is a trial. And I think what's going to happen is that the prosecution will try and get the co-defendants, the other people charged in this case, to potentially flip and testify against Senator Menendez and his wife. We also know that there's a counterintelligence investigation that's ongoing. So this is the beginning of the federal court journey. The arraignment is really the very initial steps, and there's a long time before we would see a potential trial. And Jessica, I want to pick up on that last detail you mentioned. CBS News has confirmed the FBI now has opened this counterintelligence investigation into this indictment. And just to remind our viewers, the senator is accused of accepting hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, gifts, payments toward a mortgage, a luxury vehicle, in exchange for his official work as a senator to benefit the Arab Republic of Egypt. So now that we know there's a counter-intel component, what does that mean? It means the FBI is doing exactly what they should do. And Errol, as you laid that out, as you laid the facts out based on the allegations, based on the investigation, it makes all the sense in the world that the FBI would be looking at the Egyptian intelligence agency's involvement in this case. And we have to remember that Senator Menendez had an important position, that he was involved in intelligence as his position as a senator, that he was on that committee, that he had an enormous amount of power, and that the allegations here are that he was essentially working with the Egyptian government. So when we're thinking about counterintelligence, we're thinking about whether or not Senator Menendez was working not for the U.S. government in some ways, but for the Egyptian government. And I will just reiterate, an investigation does not mean a conviction, but I think, frankly, it would be strange to see these allegations and the involvement that Senator Menendez allegedly had with a foreign government and how he was allegedly uh, working with this foreign government and not have a counterintelligence investigation. So, Jessica, this is the second time that Senator Menendez has been brought up on federal charges. The first time resulted in a hung jury. The judge ultimately ended up vacating those charges. Uh, how does any of that play into what's happening now? And uh, as he has denied the uh, the allegations made against him, we expected uh, that not guilty plea. But was there anything else that stood out in today's arraignment? No, I don't think anything else stood out. I mean, obviously, the counterintelligence investigation, I think, is the news that we are rightfully focusing on. Um, his decision to plead not guilty was predictable. But when it comes to that past trial that you asked about. He was brought up on charges in 2015 and then tried in 2017. I think it shows that these cases, these federal corruption cases, are not slam dunk cases. That even if people think something is amiss, that you have to draw lines between official actions and accepting bribes. Let's remember in this case, there are three buckets of charges. They deal with bribery, they deal with honest services fraud, and they deal with extortion. Now, the allegations in the complaint are damning, but that doesn't mean that you can draw a straight line to a conviction. And what the prosecution is going to have to show here is that the senator knew what he was doing, that he acted with corrupt intent, and that he took official actions, again, knowing he was abusing his position and doing that in return for cash, for gold bars, for a luxury car. And um, that isn't always... Again, a fait accompli, but this is a strong complaint. He does need to take this seriously. And in the background of all this, Jessica, you have the people of New Jersey who want a senator who can function and deliver for them, but uh, members of uh, Menendez's own party are mm -hmm. calling for him to resign as all this mess gets sorted out. You pointed to the gold bars. When you look at the indictment, you know, 
jackets stuffed full of these things, it doesn't look good. So as we look at a, a growing list of people on, in his own party calling for him to step down, what might be the damage in the meantime before this is litigated? Well, I think that's a great question. This is we're talking about political damage now. And I think it's important to remember that I believe this is the first time in U.S. history that a sitting senator has twice faced federal corruption charges. Politically, that can be difficult to survive. And I think that Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is in a strange place, so to speak, where he is trying to keep his numbers as high as possible, but he's also trying to listen to his caucus and there are increasing cries for him to step down. And um, that political pressure, I think, I don't mean to obfuscate the question, but I think the issue is, can Senator Menendez withstand the political pressure and will there be growing cries for him to step down? We already know that his colleague, the junior senator from New Jersey, Cory Booker, has said it's time. And Cory right. Booker was a character witness in the original trial. So we'll see if that kind of breaks the dam open in terms of political pressure. And how does all of that then play into the potential for a polluted jury pool, given how much attention this is already receiving, Jessica? Yeah, I think when it comes to a jury pool, what we're really looking at is we're not trying to find people who have never heard of Senator Menendez or who don't have a view of Senator Menendez. We're trying to look at people who can put aside their political affiliations and their political views and say, let's look at the specific statutes at issue in this case. Let's look at the specific allegations and let's look and see whether they match up. Will there be more kind of intensive jury questioning than in a run of the mill case? I think the answer to that has to be yes. All right, we'll continue watching this closely. Jessica Levinson joining us from Los Angeles. Uh, we always appreciate your insight. Thank you very much. Thank you.